When academics do research, they share their work by writing papers. And when it comes to doing new research, whether that's as a PhD student, an academic, or an undergraduate doing an assignment, existing papers are a vital starting point. But Google search isn't designed to help you find papers in the niche area you're interested in. So how do you find papers? My name is Thomas Rintoul, I'm an astrophysics PhD student at Cardiff University and welcome to my channel where we talk about astronomy and my experiences in academia. In this video we're going to talk about three things, the tools you can use to find academic papers, how you then use these tools to find the papers you're looking for, and how you use these tools to follow a paper trail either forward or backwards in time using these tools. Before we get into the video, some caveats. I am an astrophysicist, I am a scientist, so I'm going to be coming at it from that background, but I'm going to try and make this as generic and field agnostic as it can be. I'm also not going to be discussing AI tools like Perplexity or anything like that. I don't think they're trustworthy enough at this point and I haven't tried them out extensively. And thirdly, I'm not going to be discussing other tools like Connected Papers which can be used to look at the links between papers because it's not universal, it doesn't work for everything. And especially if you're looking at new papers, a lot of the time they're not mapped out yet. So with that in mind, how do you search for a paper? As I mentioned before, Google search is not the tool for this. It's going to give you more general, less technical results. And if it does give you a paper, chances are it's not going to be current or necessarily relevant. But Google does have a tool for academic literature search. It's called Google Scholar and it's fairly field agnostic. You can search up anything in it and it will give you academic papers on that topic. So if you're not in physics and astronomy watching this video, pay attention to the stuff for Google Scholar. If you are in physics and astronomy, then I'm going to direct you to the NASA Astrophysics Data System. This is fairly field specific. So if you're in astronomy, it's great. And if you're in some areas of physics, it's great as well. So pay attention to this one. There are other tools for doing literature search. One I've used before is Web of Science, but I'm not going to go into that in this video because I only have access to that because I'm part of a university. These other systems are free for anyone to use. So how do you find a paper with these tools. I'm going to go through them both at the same time, so follow along with the one you're interested in using. I'm going to use a common search term for both NASA ADS and Google Scholar. So it's going to be something astrophysical. I'm going to use something from my own research, the circumgalactic medium. So let me type that into both. Fortunately, Google Scholar does have autofill. So I type in circumgalactic medium on there and I get this first paper from Tomlinson and collaborators from 2017. It's an annual review paper, so a review paper of the field. If I go on to NASA ADS and I type in circumgalactic medium, that will give me another load of papers. The first one here is from MANA and PAL, and uh, that's a paper from 2024. And this is where you see the first key difference between NASA ADS and Google Scholar. NASA ADS has given me recent papers. It started with something from 2024, whereas Google Scholar has given me a paper from 2017. It sorts by relevance or what it thinks is the most relevant. And a review paper is a pretty good start. If however I want it to be sorted by date, I can just click sort by date on the left hand side and I get a paper from four days ago by Romano and collaborators. So that gets me my results immediately. Now I want to refine this. Say I want something from 2023. Well I can do this on both Google Scholar and ADS. So I can go onto the left hand side and go for custom range and say I want stuff that was exclusively published in 2023 and then I get this first paper key physical processes in the circumgalactic medium. Filtering it by date to 2023 alone does remove the sort by date. It only gives me sort by relevance. If I try and sort by date again, it will then get rid of my 2023 filtering. This is one of the things I don't like about Google Scholar. Whereas NASA ADS, I can specify I want 2023 only. I can apply that and I can even say I only want refereed papers from 2023, stuff that's been through a peer review process and then I'm down to something like one and a half thousand papers. Now it's quite common to meet someone at a conference and think mm, I want to know what their paper was on this topic so I'm going to look for them. Now you can do this on both NASA ADS and Google Scholar. So I'm going to go and type in author colon R Packmore and that will give me all papers by that author but not necessarily first author papers. So any paper on this topic, they are an author on. I have not found a way to make Google Scholar give me first author papers. Going from ADS, I can ask for the same thing. I can type in author R. Packmore. 
and then that will give me all papers with that author. If I want their first author papers though, I can use the little hat symbol that you get by typing Shift 6, at least on a UK keyboard, and that will give me four papers by Rudiger Packmore on the CGM. That's great, and being able to look for first author papers is really helpful, and it kind of bugs me that I can't find a way to do it on Google Scholar. Going back from looking at that specifically though, ADS does have a few other tools that I find really useful. I can specify specific publications, like say I only want stuff from the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, or I only want something from a specific institution, so I can say I only want something from Max Planck, um, and that will give me any of the Max Planck Institutes, but I can specify that sort of thing in ADS, I haven't found a way to do it in Google Scholar. To do all of the stuff that we've just done without needing to go through all of the various different steps, you can use advanced search on both Google Scholar and ADS. So we go up to the hamburger menu, we click advanced search, I type in circumgalactic medium, I say that I want it to be written by R. Packmore and I want um, Articles published in monthly notices, and that will give me monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. I want everything published from 2021 to 2024 that fits those parameters. Search. And that will give me a list of all of the things. Great, three pages of results. Now, ADS, fairly similar. We can go to the classic form, and I can say that I want, um, I want pack, pack more, comma, R, I want it to be from 2021 to 2024. I want it to include circumgalactic medium in the title, um, or in the or in the key abstract or keywords and monthly. Uh, I would say Munra's, yeah, monthly notes of the Royal Astronomical Society search. And that gives me all of the papers in that category and I can do this without needing to go through all of the various pages. Great if you know what you're looking for. Now that we've found a paper we want to be able to follow the paper trail. Now if you found like a recent paper and you want to know what has gone into that paper, what research previously has influenced that, then you want to look at the references. Now on Google Scholar that isn't the easiest thing to do, there's not an easy way to find the references for a paper from Google Scholar itself. It gives you the related articles option, which will give you similar articles, but not necessarily a full reference list. The only way that I've found to do this is to click through to the page where the paper is hosted, and then you can go and try and find its references, which on monthly notices you'll find on the left-hand side. And you get a big long list of things that you can go and search. And they link straight to ADS because this is an astronomy paper. On NASA ADS, it's much easier. So I've picked out this paper, the Auriga Project, which is again based uh, based in my research field, and I can click on references and I get a full list of every paper that that paper has referenced, which is really, really useful. So this is how you can follow things back. If you've got a new paper, you can see what influenced that, what influenced that, and get back to like the fundamental papers of the field. But what if you've been given one of those fundamental papers by a colleague or a supervisor or whatever? If you've got that situation, then you want to see what papers that has influenced to see what's going on in the field now. For that, you want to see it's cited by. So on Google Scholar, there's a nice button here, cited by 574 papers. I click that and I see every single paper that has ever cited this paper by Grand and collaborators. On ADS, it's again pretty simple. You click citations and it will give you all of the list of citations of <laughs> for this paper, which this one has a lot because it's a simulations paper, like a basic, like a base simulations paper that's telling you a lot about it. So this one has a lot of these, but this lets you then follow things forward as well. I hope this has been a useful look at how to find papers with a tool designed for the job, how to refine your search and how to follow a paper trail forwards or backwards in the process of a literature review. I plan for this to be an ongoing series looking at some of the things we should have been taught in schools and universities that so many of us weren't. If you have any suggestions for future topics for this series, please drop them in the comment section down below. But it's time to wrap up. If you'd like to discuss this video or any of my other content, then please do join us over on Discord. It's one of the best places to be on the internet. If you're looking for something else to watch, there's some recommended viewing on screen now. And before you go, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.